If I asked you to picture an album cover, there's a good chance you'd think of one of these. Maybe it's because you like them, but more probably it's because you've been exposed to these covers more. For me personally, I saw these album covers long before I ever heard the music behind them. In the case of Pink Floyd, I went out looking for the music, specifically because I thought the cover was cool. I'm not alone here, memorable album art can lure a listener in. Crucially, it can mean the difference between a sale or the album being overlooked. In purely commercial terms, album art functions as a marketing tool. But album covers can also add to the artistic value of a piece of music. The trippy prism on the cover of Dark Side of the Moon isn't just eye-catching, it also helps to emphasize the album's psychedelic sound and themes. That's why in this video I want to take a look at an artist who's created one of the most distinctive visual identities in the history of popular music, and whose imagery I think adds to the impact of that music. Stanley Donwood, the cover artist for Radiohead. Stanley Donwood grew up in Essex and studied at the University of Exeter, where he first met Radiohead who were then in the early stages of their career. As Tom York, the frontman of the band, explains, I met Don Wood first day at art college, and he had a better hat and suit on than me. That pissed me off, so I figured I'd either end up really not liking this person at all, or working with him for the rest of my life. It ended up being the latter. Don Wood has created the artwork for all of Radiohead's releases since 1995, starting with their breakthrough album, The Benz. Unlike most cover artists, Donwood is usually present in the studio with the band while they work, so that he can attempt to capture visually what the band was trying to achieve sonically. I try to distill a sense of what the music conveys into the texture of the artwork. I try to see what the music looks like. And also, Donwood says, Simply put, it's because I rely on Tom's ability to fuck up whatever it is that I'm painting. Donwood's artwork has evolved alongside the band's music as their success grew and their sound became increasingly dark and experimental. Donwood has created several amazing album covers for Radiohead, but for me, I think the best might be the art for their seventh album, In Rainbows. After Radiohead's experimental Kid A and their politically charged Hail to the Thief, In Rainbows represented a return to a more accessible sound for the band. The music is more organic and the lyrics are more personal than those of their previous efforts. The cover art reflects this. In contrast to the jagged designs of Kid A or the bleakness of OK Computer, the cover for In Rainbows is vivid and naturalistic. To achieve this effect, Donwood created the image with syringes filled with molten wax. Part of what makes this cover so effective is that it represents an evolution in the band's sound without losing the band's essence. It still feels like a Radiohead album. It might be bright and colourful, but it still has that familiar Radiohead undercurrent of anxiety to it. There's something menacing and alien about those liquid colours. As Donwood himself explains, it's a rainbow, but it's very toxic. But I think the cover does more than just represent the album's sound and the band's style. It's also connected to the album's form as well. In Rainbows was a major departure from the norms of album releases. It was given a surprise release with almost no promotion. More significantly, Radiohead made the album available for download on their website, where fans could set any price for it, even nothing at all. This was partly a promotional move, but it was also a response to the very real ways in which websites like Napster and other kinds of online music piracy were shaking up the music industry. In Rainbows sidestepped all these illegal downloads and paved the way for the music streaming model that dominates the business today. Some fans have interpreted the cover's repetition of the title and the band's name as a reference to the infinite range of prices fans could set as the download price. 
but I think it's more of a self-aware comment on the album's function as a product. It reminds me of the pop art movement, which also used the repetition of images to question the boundary between art and product in modern consumer culture. More than that, this album cover is an early example of glitch art. Glitch art is a movement that uses elements like distortion, repetition, and vivid RGB colors to comment on what the glitch artists see as our increasing reliance on technology. A glitch art expresses anxiety about things like social media, smartphones, and the internet in general, much like a lot of Radiohead's music. The In Rainbows cover has all the hallmarks of glitch art. The bright colors are reminiscent of a malfunctioning RGB channel, the repeated text, broken up by those jagged backslashes and underscores, kind of looks like a corrupted text file. It's no surprise, Glitch Art is deeply concerned with how the internet has changed the mediums we use to make and distribute art, and I think we can see that here. In Rainbows is a work of art, a body of music that took Radiohead years to produce, but it's also just data. Radiohead seems to acknowledge that the internet has reduced their music to just a bunch of ones and zeros, which could be copied and shared infinitely in a tiny frame of time, with just a few clicks. The release and marketing of In Rainbows proved that Radiohead were ahead of their time in understanding how the internet would change not just music, but art and commerce in general. And here the cover helps to communicate that. In other words, Donwood's Radiohead covers function as more than just a marketing tool. They're a key aspect of the band's art, as much a part of the work as Colin Greenwood's bass or Tom York's voice. Each of these covers elevates the music behind it and turns it into something more than the sum of its parts. Thanks for watching.